Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this video is titled Flight Test Tales from the Desert, Parachute Testing. And this involves parachute testing on the solid reusable boosters for the space shuttle, the F-111 capsule when they uh, were redoing some of the parachutes to improve them, the air launch cruise missile, and the F-18 ejection seat tests. Now this aircraft, Balls 8, B-52 owned by NASA is an extremely historic aircraft and is now in the museum out at Edwards. But this launched a lot of vehicles. And one of the primary pilots on this was Fitz Fulton. And you can look him up on Wikipedia. He's had an amazing career. He's a, a legend. And he flew in the Berlin airlift. He dropped the X-15, the lifting bodies. He flew the XB-70, the B-58. Uh, he was an expert B-52 pilot. He flew the 747 in the approach and landing tests using the uh, shuttle uh, Enterprise. Of course, you know, the shuttle Enterprise never actually went into space. It was more of a uh, landing test vehicle, and it wasn't uh, set up for going into space. But um, he flew those missions. And one of the things you had to, uh, to do to qualify uh, the space shuttle uh, solid boosters was you had to test the parachutes. And so what they did was NASA down in uh, Dryden, they took a large object, they called it a blivet. This uh, weighed about 50, 55,000 pounds, if I remember correctly. And they would take it up under the wing of the B-52. They'd go down to El Centro, which was a test area south of uh, Edwards that we used for parachute testing typically. And they would drop it off the B-52 and uh, test the, uh, the parachutes that were used to recover the solid uh, rocket boosters. Now, there was a mission one day, and I'm the officer in charge of current operations. I'm in the command post, and, uh, you know, the, the purpose of that was to uh, coordinate any uh, activities uh, during the day in the test ranges, and if any problems come up, we were the focal point for coordinating uh, whatever action needed to be taken. I was called by Fitz in the, uh, the B-52 that, uh, hey, they'd had a problem. And the deal was that they went to release the blivet, and there's a bunch of little hooks that hold it in place, little fingers-like. And they fired the primary release system, and the hooks disengaged a little bit, but didn't release the blivet. So they fired the secondary. Still didn't release it, so it is hanging by fingertips, and not not a very good situation. Well, what do you do? Well, I got a call that the uh, F one hundred four Chase had uh, was running low on fuel, and they needed another Chase. So I picked up the hotline. We had hotlines to all the test centers on the base. I picked up the phone, and of course, the nice thing about this is they answer immediately. Uh, it's not like telemarketers calls. They answer immediately, and uh, Betty was the secretary there who I, I talked to often on this, and I said, uh, down at El Centro, the 104 is running low on gas. They need another 104, and she says, got it. Four minutes later, John Mankey calls for taxi, and of course, I'd cleared with the tower to launch this guy immediately, um, and he calls for taxi, and he's rolling. Four minutes from the phone call, till he's taxiing the airplane. That was pretty impressive. And of course he goes down there, uh, picks up on the, uh, the B-52. And John at the time was the um, uh, head of flight test down there at Dryden. It's, a, it's of course uh, Armstrong Center, but back in the seventies when this was going on, it was Dryden. So he comes up and my shift had ended. And of course the next guy goes in and says, anything interesting going on? And I go, as a matter of fact, but uh, ha I handed it over to him. The B-52 was on the way back, so I decided I'd uh, go down to test ops, and I and the ops officer went out uh, to the uh, runway to watch this. And, uh, well, the, the issue here is, I mean, this is pretty serious. If you touch down and you jostle this thing, it's going to release, and it's probably going to tear the wing off. It's not going to be good for the B-52 at all, and this could have been a disastrous landing but it's being flown by Fitz. And he comes in and makes the most absolute smooth landing I'd ever seen a B-52 make. So that was quite an interesting little uh, adventure there. 
Now, when I was involved in, and this is the same B-52 Balls 8008, uh, they were redesigning the F-111 uh, parachutes and they needed uh, to test them. So uh, what they did was uh, they took and uh, used a, a, a test vehicle to test the chutes and they put it in the B-52 and uh, I went up there. And it's kind of interesting to chase the B-52. I was used to chasing smaller aircraft and you're sitting out there on on the wing of the B-52 and normally you had a position, you're out on the wing. Well, that wing is bouncing up and down about 17 feet. So, you know, it's kind of like you had to kind of pick a place to hold and kind of sit there and, uh, and watch the wing bounce. So we come up to the release and of course they release it. Should start to deploy. Now, the interesting thing is this is going down. And if you point the nose of the T-38 down, even go you go to idle and speed brakes, it's a very slick aircraft. So chasing a parachute test uh, could be quite interesting. Typically what we had to do was start to circle it as it went down and load up on the G uh, in an effort to uh, dissipate the energy as we were descending. And that way we could spiral around it as it was descending and fully deploying. Now, back in the early days of the cruise missiles, what they would do is they would launch the cruise missiles, sometimes in the R-2508 airspace. And this is a huge airspace out there in California. Uh, sometimes they'd launch them from <clears throat> an aircraft or they would launch them from out in the Pacific and they'd come into our test area. And the deal was they wanted the cruise missiles to fly what would be a typical profile for them, which was a, a low altitude penetration. So these vehicles would be coming in very low. And I and a few of the other guys actually flew the test route in T-38s to make sure there weren't any unchartered obstacles that the, um, the, the uh, cruise missiles might run into. So we had to kind of clear this airspace on a number of routes and then, okay, back to the mission. They would drop it, it would fly. But what they wanted to do was they wanted to recover the cruise missiles at the end of the flight. Or if anything went wrong with the test flight, the, uh, the cruise missile would start to climb and then it would deploy a parachute and um, it would be recovered then. So part of a test mission, and we had to fly quite a few of those, was to test the parachute recovery system. So basically what they'd do is they would drop one of these cruise missiles from an aircraft and just immediately start the deployment of the chute. Well, this thing's pretty slick too. So it's going straight down and I'm nosing over, and I had to do a pretty high G spiral to stay with it. And they had a little trouble with these chutes at first. They didn't deploy properly, so it was kind of like, well, how long are you going to stay with this? Well, you don't stay with it till it impacts the ground, obviously. So we're, there was a point where you kind of go, well, we got all we can get without uh, endangering <laughs> ourselves. So we would uh, uh, pull off of the thing. But it was kind of interesting. I am in a reasonably high G spiral to keep, uh, to dissipate the energy and to keep from descending, uh, ahead of this thing. And the photographers we had out at Edwards were absolutely amazing. Uh, they used for this a high speed Hasselblock, I think is the name of it, camera that weighed 18 pounds. And these guys would get just the most fantastic photographs. And I mentioned this on chasing the supersonic tank jettison tests in the F-16 that, um, one day I'm in test stops and they don't have a cameraman for the back seat of the 38. And I had flown a lot of these uh, missions in the front seat as the pilot. And they said, well, here, here's a camera. Can you do this? And I go, well, okay, here's the trigger, you know, point it at the uh, tank and take some pictures. So fine, normal uh, 30 degree, roughly angle descent. I got it, got it in the sight. He starts the 3G pull. The camera starts going down and I'm struggling to hold this because now it weighs three times as much as it did. And I don't really have it braced properly. And then, of course, when you come out back level, you bobble a little bit on the point, and, and the aircraft are, are very sensitive at this speed range, uh, being supersonic uh, in pitch. And it was kind of bobbling there, and I had an amazingly new respect for these guys and the type of photography they could do side, up through the top of the canopy. No matter what we were doing, the pictures were beautiful. Then the last one I'm going to talk about is the ejection seat tests on the F-18. The F-18 seat was being qualified. So of course it goes through a, a test program. And one of the aspects of the test program is you take it up in an airplane and you operate it. 
So there was a Navy pilot that I flew with quite a bit. We'd go down to El Centro. I'd stage out of there and we'd take off. And uh, he would have the uh, the dummy. Uh, they weren't using a, a manned test at this time, but they had a dummy in there. And he would be in the back seat of the F-4 and, and the back seat canopy is gone. Um, so you don't have to worry about dumping those out in the desert. So he's sitting back there and I'd joke with the pilot. I'd go, hey, I've been waving at your back seater and he just won't wave back. Or, you know, does this guy know what he's in for? And we'd have a little countdown and he'd fire the seat and away he'd go and get the, uh, get the photography of the seat going up. And then they would, of course, analyze all this. And it was a, um, uh, dummy with a telemetry on it so they could evaluate all the forces and things like that. So this is how they, uh, they qualified the seat. So anyway, those are my parachute tales. Thanks for watching.